Okay, so when you're ready, you can come back into the Zoom meeting, into the screen, open your eyes. Would somebody like to share what happened for them in the meditation? Maybe we should ask Ananda how she managed to drive and meditate at the same time. Amanda, have you got anything to say about this? <laughs> Hello. Driving, yeah, I, I, driving <laughs> meditation. I wanted to meditate in the um, parking space, and then I realized I paid for the ticket, so I need to get out. <laughs> so <laughs> the meditation was driving out and finding a quiet spot here. <laughs> and, and how was your meditation then? Yeah, it was immediately really, um, yeah, in this open space and uh, there was a lot of energy. Okay. Meanwhile, driving, I was like, oh no, I want to meditate. So I watched like <laughs> my mind being like, Said that I cannot, <laughs> cannot be, <laughs> be in the meditation. But yeah, then it was quiet and so. Okay, very nice. So we have a new new style now. We can have also driving meditation, <laughs> driving parking meditation. <laughs> Somebody else like to share what was going on for you? We don't have many volunteers, actually. I have to volunteer somebody. Okay, Saraswati, you look like you're smiling a lot. What would you like to share? Um, yeah, from, from, for me, it, is, um, it was a very good start in this week, and I feel also a transformation in myself, even though I'm not really part of this transformation week here in the open sky house, but um, due to the um, self-inquiry we did as part of the program, I now um, start to feel self-aware and this really um, evokes um, a deep silence in myself and that's really, really beautiful. Good, yeah, yeah, okay. <clears throat> Perhaps one of our guests would like to. We have a German translation available. Dustin, would you like to share what happened for you? We haven't met before, I think. If you say... Hello. Ah, hello, hello. Nice to meet you. Right, right. So what happened for you in the meditation? Um, so the, the thing that um, catched my focus was actually um, uh, my heart, a pressure point with my heart. Right, right. It felt uh, really heavy. And I've noticed that uh, the last couple of weeks and kind of experimenting with it, so I'm, um, um, yeah, try to pay attention in different situations, try to try to calm it down with different methods. And um, yeah, I realized that it just keeps um, fighting down and losing itself if I just watch it. And uh, as, you, as you said. Are you in a particularly stressful time? I mean... Uh, yeah, I'm in um, studying for some exams, maybe. Or... Uh, no, I'm in, in, uh, in the um, I'm looking for a new apartment, looking for a new job. I'm in, uh, 
uh, uh, not stressful per se, but uh, I make I make it stressful. <laughs> <laughs> where do you where do you live? Uh, um, Nordrhein-Westfalen in Germany. Where? Where is it? I'm? We're living in Cologne, you know, near Cologne. Yeah, it's one, near Cologne. It's a one-hour drive. One hour. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because if you're not working at the moment and you have interest, maybe you come and visit us. Sure. Or maybe you don't have so much interest. I mean, I don't know quite how you found us. You you showed up to today for the first time, I think. Uh, so I must, I'm not really sure how I found you. I I, I remember that I subscribed, uh, and then I got several emails, and uh, that's all. So I'm not I'm not really sure. This is uh, not my first time um, uh, getting in touch. With the spirituality, spirituality, um, so I was open about it, and I uh, I've seen the uh, open sky house. It looks very very interesting, um, but I haven't looked at it uh, closely. Okay, it's up to you, of course. But if you only an hour away, you could just show up here for lunch or dinner. We have dinner at seven in the evening. You're welcome to just show up and I suggest you come in the in the daytime probably and then stay for dinner if you like of course if you like. thank you thank you I will uh, I will think about it and thank you uh, you've come on the first this is I think the first time you came on the zoom and today we're going to talk about the way of the heart so that may be uh, your subject I think interesting okay <laughs> yeah, good. Good. You chose the perfect moment to show up. Yeah, yeah cool. Uh -huh. okay. Very lucky. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, now we're getting amongst the guests. Who else is a guest here? Maybe uh, Philip? Would you like to speak? I think maybe he needs translation from Indira. Ja, ich habe es heute sehr, sehr genossen zu meditieren. I enjoyed the meditation today a lot. Um, es gab mir unheimliche Ruhe. There was a lot of silence. Ich konnte, ja, tief runterfahren und es hat mir gut getan, diese ganze Woche zu üben. Ja, yeah, I could uh, come down very much and it was very good for me to practice the whole week. Okay, good. Geht immer besser. It goes uh, every time better. Right. And I understand that your son is also having an interesting time. Ja, und ich habe gehört, dass dein Sohn auch eine interessante Zeit hier hat. Ja. <lacht> I was told he was quite the actor last, was it last night? Mir wurde erzählt, dass er gestern ganz toll auf der Bühne war. Ja, das hat er sehr toll gemacht. Heute ist er mit dem Rasenmäher unterwegs gewesen. Über yes, he, Zeit. he did it very well and today he was around with a low mower. With a grass cutter. Ah, oh, wow. Good, good. He's Und happy. überrascht mich immer mehr. Also immer wieder, <laughs> jeden Tag. <laughs> jeden Tag hat er, uh, every day he cut the grass or the edges. Well, we, we always need a gardener. Maybe you, when you have to go back, you can just leave him here and uh, he can be, become our gardener. Wir brauchen immer einen Gärtner. Wenn du zurück in der Schweiz gehst, vielleicht lässt du ihn einfach hier. Wir können immer Gärtner gebrauchen. <lacht> anyway, okay. And I really like to give you a big thank you on behalf of everybody for the tremendous help with the cooking last weekend. Und ich möchte dir nochmal wirklich danken im Namen von allen für die wahnsinnige Hilfe, die du letztes Wochenende beim Kochen uns gegeben hast. 
Gern geschehen. Gern geschehen. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, so um, good. So um, I'm continuing with this uh, book, The Great Misunderstanding. Ich mache mit diesem Buch weiter, das große Missverständnis. And tonight we're going to look at chapter four on the subject of the heart. So here in Europe, we're very reliant on the mind and emotions to guide us through life. The way of the heart is about connecting to our inner navigation system, our intuition, and trusting in the flow of life. It's about living with an open heart, which means trust and surrender to what life brings. When you can trust in life as it is from the heart, you experience an expansion, expansionness and openness beyond um, emotions and the thinking mind. So, of course, if you have been to Asia or if you spend time in, in India, you, you know how in the everyday life, people are living generally, the ordinary people are living generally with a pretty open heart. And so, for example, in the case of our community, everybody loves to go to India during our retreat in January to have a month uh, in a completely different environment to the one we have here in Europe. So in our community, I would say we're very much involved in the way of the heart. But in the general society here in Europe, generally people are really trusting only their mind. And um, last night I went to a, a, a mantra concert with Krishna Das, an American man who'd spent many years in India with his guru Neem Karoli Baba. And um, there were many people at this concert, and he was um, very enthusiastically um, welcomed. But in general, in the society, I would say this kind of concert is not really interesting or popular. And um, there are there are different a different kind of of kind of maleness to the way we communicate together so this is this is the mind so devotion we can think of devotion to do with some kind of uh, temple some kind of rituals some kind of flower offering some kind of uh, uh, the mass day, for example, this is a, a very simple and very beautiful greeting, which is quite different from our greeting of shaking hands, because this greeting is, is if you like, bowing down or acknowledging the um, higher self of the person that you're greeting. So this is actually a very simple and beautiful greeting, which is used um, very much in the ancient countries. Devotion is not on the outside. It's not about the shrine or the garland. It's actually about what happens inside you. This is an important part of all my work, to watch the heart opening and see how it can be expressed through giving. When we are making prayers, what the Indians call puja, or making an offering of flowers or incense to one of the gods, something happens inside us. It's rather similar to what happens in the West when we pray in a sincere way. We can get a sense of this when we sing traditional Indian mantras. 
when you sing these mantras, you can feel an opening. And if you put your whole energy into them, something really tremendous happens. Singing the same mantra on and on for hours and hours without any point, you simply disappear. You're gone. There's nobody home. This is a wonderful moment of divine drunkenness. Surrender could happen. And this was, uh, this was certainly happening last night in this concert because Krishna Das um, played for two and a half hours, a bit more than two and a half hours. And in the beginning, of course, he played fairly regular mantras and people just sat quietly watching, listening to the mantras and singing. And gradually, gradually, I think it was maybe started about after one hour, people started standing up and moving around and dancing. And um, he supported that by playing some more lively mantras, I would say, which maybe weren't exactly mantras, until half of the uh, audience was standing and dancing together. And there was a profound energy in the, in the room. And the guys I went with, uh, they were enjoying, very much enjoying to be part of that. Surrender is a giving up of me. It is, in effect, a deconstruction or melting away of the ego. It's a melting away of the one who knows, the one that judges, the one that does something. Surrender or devotion means a deep giving up, an offering to God. God is everywhere and God is everything. God is also you. It is a surrender to each moment's unfolding. So this is actually very, very beautiful because you can feel this in Asia. One of the reasons why we're, we Europeans are pulled to go and spend time in Asia is because you can feel that the people are very connected to the universal wisdom, God. And uh, bec because of this, you can feel in the daily life of the people a certain kind of harmony, a certain kind of peacefulness. And this it is when we come back to Europe, we always feel, the whole of our community immediately feels how different it is here in Europe. I always hit it when I get to the airport already. I just arrive and walk into the airport and there's a certain energy field. And this energy field, in my case, is not comfortable at all. I spent many years living in, uh, in, in living in India. I lived also in Japan, traveled through China and uh, Thailand and so on. And um, there's something very comfortable there because there's a constant kind of invitation to open up your heart and to um, communicate together with the others through your heart, not not just through the mind. So this surrender, this is pretty wonderful. It's about giving up the knower, giving up everything inside you that you think you know. It can be a little scary. You can become terrified. So this is uh, what makes it, what makes what is basically very simple, makes it very difficult. Because on the one hand, we maybe have some glimpses of this surrender when the me is just not around. It's like the me disappears and it's replaced by a lightness and a kind of um, expansion and uh, a quietness, which is very, very attractive. So it's very lovely. But unfortunately, because maybe we haven't done enough work on our issues, the mind comes back even quite quickly 
And then we find ourselves again back in our uh, common, common um, way of communicating, our common way of thinking a lot and so on. So I have a, a, a quote here from Ramana Maharshi where he's talking about uh, the way of the heart. He was asked about whether the way of the heart is a, is, a, is, is a perfectly good way because, of course, he was very well known for self-inquiry. And so um, sometimes he, he talked also about the way of the heart, but he was not so... Um, he was not so questioned about that because he was more famous for his idea of self-inquiry. To surrender is to let go of everything without anticipating or expecting anything in return. Letting go of everything also encompasses abandoning the aspiration to realize the self. So there's no deal. There's no deal about surrender. So unconditional surrender is a very powerful way to become free. But it's not an easy way because for us Western educated people are are letting go and surrendering can be terrifying it can be very scary because it's as if everything we thought we knew is some, suddenly not not really interesting anymore but what is what is possible out of this shift is that we can shift into a situation where we come to the moment. We find ourselves living from moment to moment to moment. And as we get more practiced in this way of living, we find out that without having to think about it in the, in the mind, we get the answer. We simply know the answer to some particular situation. And so this comes to us in, an, in another way comes through our essence, comes through our being. So maybe somebody would like to um, dialogue a bit about that before we go on. I, maybe I say one more thing about so surrender and then we perhaps talk about surrender. Surrender can only work if there's a deep trust. Fundamental to trust is an acceptance of what is. Even when you think, for whatever reason, whatever judgment, for whatever idea, that you don't like it. If you continually surrender your personal wanting, you will find that all your judgments ideas, desires, and comparisons start to disappear and you feel closer to the self, closer to existence, closer to your own essence. In fact, you start being, you start simply living from your being. And this, this is, is a very, very different way to live than trusting our conditioned mind which is how we've been brought up. The conditioned mind is the boss here in Europe, in the, in the Asia. Well, it's changing drastically over the last 50 years, it's changed drastically. And so as the West um, has had more influence in India, um, the number of people trusting and surrendering is, I would say, on the, on the decrease. It's on the decrease. Okay, somebody like to share something about the topic of surrender? And just wave your hand. Ah, it's Pavati. Okay, Pavati. 
if you say something can you and you can I can hear you, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can say what I learned in the open sky house uh, to surrender to the situations because very often the situations are changing here. Either you think you will do the dinner on this place and then it happens that everything is good on the other place. And so to surrender, not to have the judgment, I but I want it this way. And there I can say uh, during the years now that it, it happened more and more this to open. Also when, when situations are come where you don't know what to do now and you then you have come this idea to open up to the bigger one. So just to hear um, what could be the solution and not to, to actively the mind and what, what do I think about the situation? And right. this is for me also the trust into that it will come. Right. Well, I can say without any question, uh, Pavati, that you are the dream cook for anybody like me doing a weekend or seminar or something like that. I can even remember way back when I first began this about 30 years ago, I was living in Australia. And I remember getting a very nice woman to come and cook for us. Yeah, she seemed very nice. But then she wanted me to tell her exactly when I wanted lunch. And, you know, basically, you know, for her, this was the most important part of the cooking for her. She had it all ready for this time. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't at all happy when I would change the time, you know, and give <laughs> later. And of course, you know how it is here and you have this sort of inner flexibility and you're just the most wonderful support to anybody giving a seminar here. And I'm sure the people that rent our place to give their students, their external students, uh, to bring them here for some particular seminar, I'm sure one of the reasons they come here is not only that your food is delicious, but also you, you're very flexible. Mm. And you, 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 as you just say, you, you expect things to change. And when they change, you don't have a kind of fixed idea in your mind, but you're ready to flow into some new situation. And that I'm sure is very attractive for many of the seminar givers who come here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also really fun. It's really fun doing to see what will be the solution. It, it doesn't matter if it's about the cooking also somewhere else. No? If you have a car crash or something, doesn't it is always there, actually. No? Yeah, because life is full of things that uh, change and uh, appear in, a, in, a, in an unexpected way. So when you get very used to letting go, surrendering to the moment, then your whole life starts to change. And there, there's not so many reasons why you have to judge situations. You just say, OK, this is the situation. The, the lunch time has gone half an hour late. No problem. I just uh, turn the turn the things down and turn them up a bit later, and yeah. um, an easy flexibility. Yeah, but unfortunately, because of the way we're conditioned, it's very easy for a cook to have an idea, and if it gets changed, if the agreement gets changed, then all kind of personal elements come in, like. How can they do that to me? I was already, and now it's late, and oh, my food will be cold and won't be as good as it could be. And then you you get very involved in a sort of personal way into the situation, and that doesn't lead for a very happy life, I would say. Yeah, surrender is very beautiful because it it brings us into a wonderful relationship with life itself. This is right. But I can see that the tendency of the mind is still there. It depends how uh, powerful I feel in, in, inside. If I'm right. a bit weak, a weak day, then the mind also likes to turn up with the idea that it's not possible or something. Right, right. That I also recognize. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, I mean, this is why dealing with the mind takes time because uh, yeah. it's, it's not so easy to uh, change to one's being from the mind because we're very much uh, used to this conditioning that comes through the mind. Yeah, Papati said, always vigilant, and this stays forever. <laughs> Yeah, he says, oh, always vigilant. You have to watch. You always have I to be. To watch your awareness has to be, you know, uh, very active. Active mm -hmm. awareness gives you a chance not to go into these yeah. mind, mindy ways of uh, approaching life. Yeah. Okay, very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay, somebody else likes to talk about this? Uh, oh, there's Jaya. Okay. Go ahead, Jaya. Hi. Hi. Um, bei mir ist es so, dass in mir zwei verschiedene Tendenzen manchmal sind. Also, ich tue es. Ich tue etwas und mein Kopf versteht nicht, warum ich das tue. Und ähm, ja, äh, Are you there, Indira? Could you translate? Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So in me, there are two different tendencies. And sometimes I'm doing something and my mind does not know uh, why I'm doing this. Yeah, this is lovely. Yeah, this is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, das ist auch sehr schön. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ich, ich denke dann, der Kopf denkt, es ist falsch. Er versteht überhaupt nicht, was, warum ich das jetzt mache. Und manchmal im Nachhinein weiß ich, ah, es war richtig. So my mind or my head is uh, judging that this is wrong, what I'm doing. But often afterwards, I can see, ah, it was completely right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and just by that process of, of seeing, uh, you, you'll find that without any doubt, you'll come more and more into this way of living. And the power of, of the conditioned mind will get less and less. Und einfach nur bei diesem Prozess wirst du immer mehr feststellen, dass du in den Flow des Lebens kommst und die Kraft des Verstandes wird immer weniger werden. And this, this trusting that develops is, is very beautiful because um, life becomes actually rather easy because if you, if you don't pre-plan everything you're going to do but you allow things to happen then there's an enormous release actually there's an enormous release and every single different thing that happens in your day is fun is is exciting is an adventure and um, ja und das vertrauen das wächst je mehr du das uh, erlaubst dass du die dinge nicht alle planen musst sondern dass du erlaubst, die Dinge einfach geschehen zu lassen und dann wird alles in deinem Leben zu einem Abenteuer. Äh, ja, ein Abenteuer ist es schon. <lacht> ich weiß. Äh, it's ja, it's aber, already an adventure. Aber es ist noch ein bisschen, also noch ungewohnt, also noch, ähm, ja. But it's still a bit un, um, unfamiliar. Hm. Yeah, the, but I mean, it takes time for the mind to give up, you know. So while the mind is still a bit active, you will have flashes when the mind is kind of critical of your way of, of trusting and surrendering. But yeah, uh, es braucht Zeit, bis der Verstand aufgibt. Mm -hmm. Und bis er ganz aufgegeben hat, hast du natürlich mit diesem Thema Hingabe und Vertrauen noch zu tun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is, it, there's such a power in this way of living. One of the people I went with the with to the concert last night, she told me that um, she expected to meet a friend at the concert. And of course, there were several hundred people there. And as we arrived, 
arrived exactly in the moment we arrived this friend also arrived outside and so they could meet and have a chat and, and um, it was all you know organized by existence perfect meeting amongst mm. all the hundreds of people rushing to go into the concert so how is that possible how how does it happen that such a thing is even possible but it is absolutely possible and once you find it functioning in your life then you can just say yes thank you thank you this is the best it's the best yeah. Yeah. also eine person mit der ich gestern zum konzert ja. mit der ich gestern zum Konzert gegangen bin, die wollte eine Freundin dort treffen und wie war das möglich bei hunderten von Leuten, die da waren und als wir ankamen und zum Eingang gingen, da war sie einfach da und ja, wenn du anfängst dem zu vertrauen, dass das Leben einfach ähm, dafür sorgt, dass die Dinge geschieden, ist das sehr, eine sehr kraftvolle Art zu leben hm. So we could uh, have another yeah. dark floor with somebody. Yes. I guess I would select Atma. Would you like to have a chat, Atma? Or is this subject a bit raw at the moment? Atma, möchtest du darüber reden oder ist das so ein bisschen schwierig gerade das Thema? That's fine. Shall we have a chat? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's funny um, that today is the topic of heart open. Yeah, it's interesting that today. Oh, you must me again in the background. Yeah, let's keep it dear to the background with the translation, and let's have Atma in the in the in the picture. Yeah. So yes, this is a bit your topic at the moment, maybe. Yeah, very interesting, because um, in the morning and the day before, the days before, I was very closed and then during the day, I don't know what happened, but somehow a bit my heart opens. Right. Uh, just like this and but then you... I also drink um cacao ceremony cacao and uh, because and then I open up more then my heart got more open and then I had a very nice massage and um right yeah <laughs> and then the topic of heart opening so even somebody like Atma, who's been living in the lot of resistance, can also change. I mean, it, it's not really very difficult for you because you can walk outside of the house there, go to the pond, just watch the turtles or watch the fish for a few minutes, or go and have a plunge in the swimming pool, or walk around the garden looking at our beautiful garden, I mean, I think it's hard then for you to be grumpy and uh, closed and uh, separate, isn't it? I think it's for me always possible to be grumpy and to be closed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I but... mean, we, we sympathize with you as your father was a dentist, you know. Just mm -hmm. recently I've been having some big dental work. I just finally got my teeth today, actually. So now I've got a full set of teeth in my mouth, but none of the teeth are mine, you know? I've prepared myself for the next 20 years of my life. I don't want to go and spend time in the dentist, yeah? And mm -hmm. I had a rather nice dentist. He's, he's on the point of retiring, and he's actually a good friend of Indira's. She knew him many years ago, yeah? But but anyway, um, not not to be in this kind of flow, you can see for yourself what a drastic difference it makes in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So this is a bit in your own hands, you know? Mm. You realize this? It's, it's kind of in your own hands. Yeah. And in fact, in fact, you know, Ramana Mahashi surprisingly um, offered the idea that when you're first making a understanding about closed heart and open heart, yeah? Yeah, his <laughs> Mahashi, yeah, good. Now he's near you. He's probably going to hit you in a minute. So, <clears throat> So he was saying, you know, you you in the beginning, when you're moving to open your heart, everything that happens to you, which you might be having a judgment about or making a decision, you don't really accept it or you don't really like that because you like some other thing. Um, so, I mean, uh, he was saying, OK, whenever that happens, you can say, I give this to God, you know, I just give it to existence. You see, existence is right. I surrender to existence. So you can say this, you can make it a kind of uh, mindful inquiry about the heart. So in the beginning, you're encouraging the heart to stay open because you're going to uh, surrender using your mind okay this is not a true surrender this is beginning of surrender beginning of acceptance so you can do this with your mind you see and then if you keep doing that like if you're standing outside next to the pond and you're looking at the turtle even you can't really stay in grumpiness or whatever because you're you're a person that loves nature so you only need to walk out and look in the pond, look at the turtles, look at the fish, whatever it is. You could even look at the, uh, the flowers we have there. And immediately you're touched, you see. So for you, as a nature lover, yeah, you're always proclaiming your great love of nature. You're, you're living in the most beautiful garden you can imagine. And before you went there, I even gave you a few projects uh, to make an even more beautiful garden, that area to the left of the yurt, the new yurt, is waiting for you to make it beautiful. And then I hear that, you know, your, your main complaint is that somehow you like to go more in nature, more in nature. Okay, so walk down to the Mediterranean and jump in the, in, in the Mediterranean and have a good swim, you know. You're you're living in a in a in a paradise of nature down there. Mm. You know? Can, can you notice this? Yeah, but um I see that I always find reasons, you know. Yeah, but you're a girl who always finds reasons, you know, because unfortunately. And you've grown up in a way that you trust your mind and you don't yet really trust your being, your essence. You don't really trust it. And even though you've been in the community now quite a long time, <clears throat> you've never really given it a try. You've mm -hmm. never for a long period had a yes. Surrender is about yes, yes. When, when I have my heart closed, then it's so, so difficult um, to, to step out of this. I know, I know, you, you had this. You're a master of, you know, pissing yourself off. But look at you now. Look, I mean, everybody who's watching you right now can't really imagine that I'm not saying so nice things about you. Because you, you're completely glowing right now. You see? You're glowing. Yeah, I, I also don't understand. What? Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh. Yeah, the, the mind always thinks that being in another place, doing another thing, being with different people, I will be much more happy. But this is a complete illusion, darling. This is a complete illusion. <laughs> just, 
go every morning, make a little ceremony where you, you go and say hello to the fish. You could even feed them. Then you could go and say hello to the turtle. And then, you know, and then you can see the sun, which luckily in Spain is shining a lot more than it is up here in Germany, I can tell you. And then, and then, and then, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's all possible. Uh, I, I don't know what really to say to you because uh, I've said everything to you so many times. Mm -hmm. But you should somehow realize what's going on right now. You know, feel inside what goes on, because because when you surrender, when you open your heart or your heart opens, then everything becomes lighter. Everything becomes no problem. Everything is makes it easier to just be from one thing to the next thing in a very natural flow. So your days can be very natural, which is what you like. Try it, try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... I mean, the first week you were down in Spain, you were more or less happy every day. And then I don't know what happened, but then something happened and then it changed, you know? Yeah, it's, I, I know it from myself when I ch when go to another place, um, the first day is the first time I'm just open and happy. Yeah, but, you know, don't you and want then, to... Then I see, then I see my... Um, my triggers, then I see that I have some traumas inside me, that I have an illusion, um, another perspective, how I see the world, um, a wrong perspective. Um, I see this is completely wrong, um, but it's yeah, I cannot. But you, this is you have to see and accept that you have a strong conditioning about certain things, and you make strong judgments out of them, and those strong judgments put you in your mind very strongly, and then you find yourself very resistant to the daily flow and an open heart. But this is an enormous sabotage you're doing, and. You know, you could make some decisions and step by step move your whole way of being into something which would be much more happy for you, much more lovely for you, because actually everybody looking at you now can see a beautiful young woman who, you know, when you go outside, can enjoy the fishes and the garden and the trees and the sky and the birds and everything you know you have this capacity just to say yes so, but you have to be you have to have an awareness i'm going to talk about awareness in a moment you've got to have an awareness of these triggers that so you talk about them as triggers you know so yes you probably do have some issues from your younger time which aren't yet resolved, and they they trigger some kind of uh, whatever it is, you know. So these you have to become aware about. You have to become aware about and knowing and know gradually that when your awareness uh, sees one of these old triggers appearing, you don't take it. You don't take it in because you know it's an illusionary thought from the past. It's garbage. You have no value of it anymore. You know? you know, your your daddy was probably quite a nice guy, basically. But, you know, dentists' lives are not so easy. And it doesn't give them much time for, you know, things that might have touched you more. And so... You know, maybe he wasn't the perfect daddy for you. 
I definitely found out the last days that I had, they are very much emotion connected with the topic father and daughter. Right, which you've been projecting onto me for the last year or so. Yeah. Have you noticed this? Now you're looking at your daddy issue. I mean, see how you've treated me for so long now. <laughs> yeah, that's horrible. I'm not your daddy, you know. I'm a completely different human being. Some people love me to bits, you know. You're a lovely young woman, you know. Why project onto me stuff that was going on with your father 20 years ago? I projected on every um, old guy. <laughs> old guys, right. Particularly older guys. Yeah. All guys. Yeah. Well, it's it's very positive for you that you start to see this, you know, because that's then one of the triggers which you can be more aware about. You can be more aware about that trigger to do with male energy, of male authority energy. I mean, you've got some very nice guys down there. You've got Krishna and Kiran, who are, I would say, both of them very softly men. And you don't need to project your male stuff onto them. They're, they're kind of nice. Have you noticed this? Yeah, but I do. <laughs> what? But I do. Of course I you project. Do. Yeah, you're relentless. Kind of, you know. <laughs> okay, I think we have to move on a bit. But anyway, I'm glad you could be so honest. Very nice. <clears throat> okay, so I think I go on a little bit. So careful awareness is needed because there's always the possibility of being caught up with the I. When we are caught up, we pull ourselves back into the false self. You can't really decide to surrender, but you can live a surrendered life. You can live with an open yes. And when you have this open yes, there is acceptance. You can't really experience love unless you open your heart and trust. We have, have all had moments of being open-hearted, then closed down because of some pain. So we have some history around love, around an open heart. When you meet someone who has a very open heart or is very much in their heart, then you have a sense of this person being with themselves and pulsating with energy. There's a lot of joy, fun, spontaneity and playfulness. When you have a deep trust, your whole being opens to life. You become available. And, you know, in the open sky house here in Germany, we have these two little girls running around a lot of time. And so they are constantly reminding us of the possibility. So children very often can be a wonderful reminder for us adults, you see. Service is a beautiful way to open the heart. So in India, in the ashrams in India, they have something they call karma yoga, karma yoga. And in our open sky house, we also have this volunteering where you work along with the community tasks. And by, by doing this work, you find actually that this can lead to you opening up 
and feeling your heart very strongly. I've in my past, uh, I remember particularly on some occasions in Osho's ashram, I was uh, remember one time in a festival, I was put on one end of the plate washing machine. So hundreds, even thousands of plates were put in dirty at one end and they came out the other end um, absolutely uh, boi boiling hot. They'd been steamed to a high temperature and they would come out at the, that end of, the end of the process. And my job was I was standing there in a plastic apron, plastic gloves, and hour by hour, I was taking out a bunch of plates and putting them in a plastic um, box or something. You know? So this is a really unpleasant job, really unpleasant job, because it was actually in the summer, it was pretty hot, and I'm sweating with this gloves and the hot plates, and it, it's almost like a torture. It was almost like a torture. But the amazing thing was that after I'd stopped grumbling and being pissed off about my bad luck to be given that job, I mean, I probably deserved that job. That's why somebody gave it to me. They thought, oh, we'll put him on that. He'll like, we'll really sort him out a bit. And then, you know, but the beautiful thing I remember is that as the time passed, I would give up grumbling and being pissed off. And I would come into the moment and, and the whole thing would just become wonderful. It would just become wonderful because I became wonderful. I became present. And just by being present, all these things just happened by themselves. So everything that you can judge you don't like. The, the other day, for example, some of you had met the, the architect. We had an architect staying in the house with his wife that last weekend and he stayed a few days and one day he was invited to work in the kitchen cutting carrots or something like that i don't know exactly and you know by the end of the day this sort of well-educated architect was fuming at the mouth that he should be given such a low level job to do cutting carrots you see but of course, then he left the next morning. He left because, you know, he didn't want to cut any more carrots, I guess. Um, so this was a bit tragic for him because he didn't have enough time to realize how his spiritual spirituality was so much a mindy kind of spirituality. So he's an expert on various topics. He's been reading about, probably knows much more about it than I do. But he's not living this. Anybody who met him, although he's a very nice, very polite human being, in the end, you you could easily be bored from the fact that everything is so was so mental, so mental. See, this is the price we pay. But when um, when we come into service, there's the possibility that when you understand what you're doing is contributing to some greater good, then um, the whole thing can change. Karma yoga. Washing dishes in the kitchen obviously doesn't bring you anything. Maybe you get a little tired, but if you keep washing the dishes, you find that in the end, something happens. In this simple service, the whole energy system can open up. The heart opens and the ego, the separate me, starts to dissolve and deconstruct. True service comes from the heart, along with compassion and humility. When you do service in a heartful way, then you get the benefit of an open heart. And when I first came to Osho's ashram, they, the nice ladies there decided I needed some heavy treatment. Um, I, luckily, I didn't have a PhD, so I didn't get the, the job of cleaning the toilets. But I was put in the kitchen, and then I was given the job of, of 
um, cleaning these huge metal pots, very heavy, big metal pots, you know. And like I was telling you with the plate washing machine, uh, this was a very, again, very unpleasant job. Uh, again, involved plastic apron and plastic gloves and all that. And uh, I would sweat like crazy. But something would happen, you see. I couldn't say it changed my whole life. Those metal pots in the kitchen, sweating away, sweltering away, changed my whole life because I found in those things a surrender. I could surrender, and through the surrender, something completely changed inside me. So would somebody like to um, talk about this? Do you hear me? Can you hear me? I don't know who's me. You have to wave your hand. Oh, Lakshmi. Okay, I can Lakshmi. hear you. Lakshmi. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. During the open days, I had to um, clean the toilets. Right. Right. <laughs> and I made it to a, a surrendering project. <laughs> right, right. Very good. And, and yeah, it, it was quite nice. I think, right. and I, how can I say, I dived into, yeah, and it right. was quite, really quite nice and easy, at least. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is another good example, because, you know, <laughs> in India, uh, they have a special class of people, even, who get to clean the toilets. They call them the untouchables, you know, and they get right. to do that kind of job and <laughs> your your rather posh brahmins who are the top of the heap in the indian uh, uh how can i say the, the way they divide human beings um they would never 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 clean a mm. toilet, they, toilet. They, it would be impossible good practice to surrender <laughs> yes, and as you probably found, it's 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 it comes this surrender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. Happy to hear you had a good, mm -hmm. good weekend. Yeah, oh, that's very good. Okay, something uh, from somebody else. So I better talk to Udu. Hello. Hello, John. Hello. So how are you doing? <clears throat> Fine. It's always the same story with us, with, with you and me. And um, it's nearly two or three seconds before you ask me. I know that you will ask me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's great to be part of this uh, satsang here in a moment for me, and it's very interesting what you're telling all these things about surrendering. And uh, for me, it's so crazy. And, and since I met the whole community last weekend for me for the first time, so many astonishing and crazy things happened. And um, you and also Amanda told me to buy this book and to read it. Right, right yeah, I told And you. for me, in the past, it, it was hard to, to do meditation for myself with me alone. And now I use this book for meditation. And uh, the last half hour before we start with this uh, satsang, I took the book and, and have a look, what can I read? And I read uh, a chapter called Illusion and Body. And uh, it's also talking about the surrender. And it's, yeah, for me, it's fantastic. When I when I am in contact with, with all of you, 
and I look you in the eyes, there's, there are no more questions. There, there's, I can see all, all the answers I'm looking for, for a lot of years. I can see the, in the eyes of Amanda, of Carly, in your eyes and, and, and Rhonda. And, I mean, wasn't it nice to see Ananda with her seatbelt on? Oh, it was it was so great. I fixed it. And she and, looked and, so and, and I love I love her meditation in the parking in the parking house. Yeah. It was great. And but for me it's also special. I can see she's a very beautiful woman, but it's not these a man is looking for a young, beautiful woman. It's so much more. And uh, yeah, that's that's great. It's um cannot really say that's the, the first time I had this ex experience, but um, but not so deep like it is uh, since I met you all in this house and last weekend. And uh, during the last two or three days, I, I think uh, I have to come back. I, I visit you for lunch and for dinner and yeah. I will yep. be there. We have very good dinners and lunches. If you're always <laughs> and, seven o'clock for dinner, we have silent, silent uh, dinner every night. Yeah. Mm. And it's it's, it's it's switching between laughing, crying at the same time. It's so great. Right. Right. Yeah, but you're 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 clearly very touched from the weekend. I mean, it was a very lovely weekend. Actually, many people were touched, of course. And uh, unfortunately, for most of the people who were touched that weekend, they already you know, now it's Thursday. They're already beginning to disintegrate again, probably, and trusting again their mind. And you've done enough spiritual work that for you, it's possible to now uh, stay open and to enjoy what happened by chance because you didn't know what would happen when you came here. Yeah. 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 And of course, this is such a beautiful moment, you know, that you have now to just trust that, which you already know it, you know everything. You only have to trust what you know uh, and then you're you're living free, actually. And you have to be very, very aware of, about how the regular stuff can come back and grab you again. And you 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 know this. You have enough experience to to be particularly careful for that. Okay. Okay, so anyway, nice, uh, nice you have good memories of the weekend. I think a lot of people actually really enjoyed. You were there on the last meeting we had on Sunday, I think. I was expecting to come there and find almost nobody there, but actually uh, there was quite a lot of people stayed for the meeting. Um, okay, good, nice to meet you again. <laughs> Okay, so anybody else particularly touched from this subject tonight? I think Ananda's starting to drive again. I guess she's not meditating. Anybody else? You only have to wave your hand.
Okay, so I think we'll we'll stop now. Thank you. So the next of these Zoom meetings will come again. We'll start again in the middle of October because um, I'm taking my darling daughters on a holiday. We're going to go to our house in Spain and then we're going to drive back through um, part of Spain and France, make a little adventure. And um, so I'll be back in the middle of August and then we'll start these meetings again every Thursday. And also um, this weekend, uh, these two meetings I enjoyed personally very much. So we're going to start once a month on a Friday evening at eight o'clock. Um, we're going to start a live public meeting here in the house. And it'll be a free meeting. So anybody who would like to come can come. And um, when are we starting in Jira? Is it September or, or already in August? I think August. It was, it was 23rd or something of August. 23rd of August on the Friday. We'll, we'll, probably, have, we'll probably have a Zoom on the Thursday. And then we'll have a live meeting here in the house on the, on the Friday at eight o'clock. And it'll be, is it the fourth, fourth Friday or the third Friday every month? Fourth, it's the fourth Friday every month. So on the fourth Friday every month, there'll be a, um, a public live satsang for free. And, um, and then we carry on with the Zoom meetings also from about the same time in, in August. And the other thing that's happening is during the year, I give different retreats. And I would say one, one of the best ones and then probably the second best one, I think India is the, the very best retreat. But we're going to have in Spain, in our house in Spain for two weeks from the 30th of August for two weeks, we're having a retreat. And this has been very... Uh, beautiful for the last few years so if anybody would like to get a little closer i recommend that retreat okay thank you